Let's be clear here. If one universal moral principle survives, then the moral absolutist must win this debate. To my mind, knowing that I have in fact encountered a moral absolute is not rocket science. Let's try out a few on you. You ought not to slaughter, torture, or sexually abuse infants. You ought not to commit random acts of violence. You ought not to enslave or otherwise mistreat human beings. You should not, really, you should not treat people differently because of the color of their skin. These are just a few of the many moral absolutes that hold everywhere and at all times. Professor Gomberg, to his credit, seems to admit, to admit the existence of moral absolutes. On page one of his recent book, he writes, and I quote him, We think it wrong that men should get the best jobs because they are males, and that the best educational opportunities are in overwhelmingly white schools, end quote. On page 17, he writes, well, we believe it wrong that black people, on account of their racial identity, should have lesser opportunity and worse jobs, end quote. In fact, on the same page, he writes, and quoting again, it is wrong that anyone should have lesser opportunity and worse jobs, end quote. All of these statements appear to be moral judgments that testify to an absolute standard. So what on earth is going on here? The first possibility is that Professor Gomberg has fallen into moral realism, moral absolutism. In other words, he holds that at least one moral principle, let's say you ought not to engage in systematic racism. I agree with this position, and if he holds it absolutely, I commend him for it. He is in fact a moral realist, and we can end this debate right now break into small groups and discuss philosophical issues of greater importance. <laughs> Judging from the way he consistently couches his moral judgments in qualifiers like, we think this or that about morality, I suspect he wants the debate to go on. If anything, he wants to limit his claims to specific cultures. Systematic racism is right for some people, perhaps, we just don't like it here. This brings me to the second possibility, that of preference. Perhaps Professor Gomberg, or him, morality is like our choice of favorite pizza. I prefer pepperoni over sausage. And believe you ought to as well. We don't like child torture and female circumcision. But let's not judge them universally or absolutely. If we search hard enough, we might find a people group who value these things. And truth be told, we might someday prefer them ourselves. I think that Professor Gomber really believes that racism and unequal opportunity are wrong. And that this belief is not based on a mere preference. So once again, we are left wondering what he might mean. The third and last option is perhaps the most interesting. Morality is merely a matter of power. Morality is about influencing people for the sake of, of a larger purpose of our own making. <coughs> Significant indicators in Professor Gomberg's writings lead me to believe that this, or something like it, is in fact his position. Our notion of equal opportunity, according to Professor Gomberg, changes with time and circumstance because it is determined by what he calls power and logic. According to Professor Gomberg, and I quote him, power and logic are connected, and power is more important. It seems that, for Professor Gomberg, logic in the service of power directs, or at least should direct, our moral compass. 30 seconds. What's wrong with this position? First of all... 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. You said two minutes, about 30 seconds. <laughs> Can I get that uh, one minute here? Uh, we don't want relative time, we want the real thing. <laughs> I'm going to skip right down to the end here. With this, uh, if, you, if you're, uh, and speak freely if I can, if you are believing that power is what makes, is the basis of morality, you are more prone, or at least implicated, in using deception to get your way. 
With this in mind, what I propose is that Professor Gomberg and I help the listener avoid being duped by conducting the rest of this debate as though we were playing a game of philosophical taboo. If you hear any of the next three things I say, they're philosophical missteps. Buzz them out of your mind. Poor moral reasoning is present here. Number one, be on the lookout for any line of argumentation that makes light of your natural moral instincts. Your, your rudimentary moral inclinations are more reliable indicators of moral truth than either of our philosophies. If you hear a line of argumentation, in this sense, buzz it out of your mind. Secondly, be on the lookout for complex moral examples used as good indicators of moral truth. Trust the old Latin proverb, tough cases make bad law. Complicated moral problems create gray areas. They force us to withhold judgment pending further information and analysis. The fact that, that it is very difficult to determine the moral answer does not mean there is no answer. Lastly, be on the lookout for someone trying to have it both ways. For example, if morality is supposed to be a matter of convenience, convention, or circumstance, but it is couched in universal language, then there has been sleight of hand here, and you have been conned. Buzz it out of your mind. There's no place for it in sound philosophical debate. Thank you.